Okay, um, as I uh, look at, uh, again, this chapter in the book, uh, God Still Speaks, um, on page number 39, I talk about this verse, 1 Timothy 4.14, where Paul tells Timothy, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given to thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery or the elders. So Timothy was told to pay attention to his gift and he was told about when he received that gift. It was through prophecy and the laying on of hands. Now, one of the reasons why I really began to value prophecy and being a prophetic person was that I knew that it could be an instrument or it could be a vehicle. It can be a conduit to releasing gifts, anointings into the lives of people. And I wanted the people that were part of my ministry to have the gifts, the anointings that God desired for them to have. So we began to do prophetic gatherings in our church probably 30 years ago. We'd invite prophets in, apostles in. We lay hands on candidates, prophesy over them, lay hands on them. Um, doing what we call a prophetic presbytery. There was no one else that I knew that was doing it at the time. But I got a hold of a book called Prophetic Gatherings in the Church by David Blungram. I think that book is out of print now. There may be a reprint of it. Prophetic Gatherings in the Church by David Blungram, which was from Bible Temple Publishing in Portland, Oregon. And when I read this book, I was amazed that churches weren't doing this, having prophetic gatherings. I knew that churches had evangelistic gatherings, healing, teaching, prayer, worship gatherings. Um, but I didn't know anyone doing prophetic gatherings, especially prophetic presbyteries, where, where they would have either doing ordination or actually gathering to lay hands and prophesy over a select few people. I didn't know anyone that was doing that. We began to do it. And I saw the gifts of God come to another level in our church. I saw people receiving different impartation and gifting through prophecy and the laying on of hands. And I saw the value of prophecy and we incorporated this into our church. Now we always use it during ordinations. We always, when we ordain someone, we call the prophets. We have people in our ministry that are recognized prophets. We lay hands on them. We not only set them, we prophesy over them. And many times they receive different gifts that they need to fulfill the ministry that God has given them, what they're ordained for. I believe that ordination should be much more than ceremonial. A lot of times ordinations have become ceremonial, but I believe there should be power and anointing and gifting and the spirit of God in an ordination. I don't think it's just, it should just be ceremonial where you're, you know, you're wearing um, gowns or you're, you're wearing clergy collars and you're reading scriptures and giving a charge. All of that is good, but sometimes there's a lack of the spiritual dynamic that evidently Timothy received. It, it could have been at the time of his setting apart, but there was a time when Timothy and Paul is reminding Timothy, don't neglect the gift that was given to you through prophecy. So the gift actually came through the vehicle of prophecy. So prophecy is one of the ways that we can impart gifts into people. Now, churches and leaders that want to really see the gifts of God manifesting in your church will hopefully understand the importance of the prophetic. Uh, prophets really have an anointing to release people. We find, for instance, Samuel went and he anointed Saul to be the first king of Israel. Then he anointed David to be the next king. So prophets do have an anointing to release people into their callings, their, their purpose. Prophets were used to release kings. And uh, prophets have an anointing to release people into their callings. Now you can have the calling of God. And I'm not saying that you have to have a prophet to do this. We know that Jeremiah was called from his mother's womb. We know that Amos was neither a prophet nor a prophet's son. And God called him and sent him. So you can be called and sent by God. But there is a way that God does use prophets and prophetic ministries 
to identify people, to release them in their calling, to impart gifting, and to, re and to, and to send them out. We know, for instance, in Acts 13, in the church at Antioch, they were praying and fasting and ministering to the Lord. And the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work whereunto I've called them. Now, now, we don't know how the Holy Ghost said that. It could have been through a prophetic word. It doesn't specify, but it was through the voice of God that they knew to se separate Paul and Barnabas, and then they sent them out as apostles from Antioch. So the Spirit of God does use prophecy as a way to identify, release people into their callings. Now, I have a real passion to see people walk in their calling and gifting. I am not the kind of pastor that thinks that the only one in, in the church that is important is the pastor. You go to some churches and the pastor does everything. They All the preaching, the teaching, the prophesying, they very seldom raise up strong sons and daughters and release them. Uh, and that's unfortunate. I don't believe that's the will of God. I believe that leaders should have a desire to see their sons and daughters raised up, not just physical, natural sons and daughters, but spiritual sons. And daughters. When I look at some ministries, I ask, where are your sons? Where are your daughters? Not your, your natural ones, but where, your, where, where, where are the ones you birthed, released, sent out? Where are they? Are they just sitting in a pew, listening to you preach every week? Do you release them? Do you activate them? Do you let them share the pulpit? Do you let them preach? Do you, do you let them prophesy? Do you let them minister? Or is it just you and your wife? Or you and your natural son? That's unfortunate. That's not God's best. And so really what the prophetic does, it really opens up a church to the supernatural. Let me say that again. The prophetic opens up a church to the supernatural, to the gifts of God, to manifestations of the Holy Ghost. No wonder God says in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 14, uh, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy because prophecy is that gift that really activates other gifts. It's like a catalyst. Uh, it's a vehicle. It's a tool. And of all the gifts, desire to prophesy, covet to prophesy, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. This is why I do so much teaching on the prophetic because God identifies it as a gift that we should desire, covet, and rather than any other gifting because it can unlock, release, activate people, giftings, callings, anointings. It is an amazing, amazing gift. And there's two, uh, there's, in some churches, there's just a lack of it. In some churches, there's no prophetic utterances, no corporate prophecy, no personal prophecy, no prophetic teams, no prophets. It's very seldom even seen or heard in many churches. They're preaching, teaching, uh, even decreeing. But when it comes to the prophetic, no prophetic songs, no prophetic uh, music, no prophetic words, no prophets ministering. It's just a, a pastor preaching and teaching. And, and, and that's it. And, and, and that church will lack a dimension of the spirit of God and the gifts of God because they don't embrace this uh, prophetic ministry. God still speaks. I talk about that in this book. It's also available to Amazon. God still speaks. We need this in our churches. And this changed my church. This changed Crusaders Church of Chicago. This, this brought us into a realm. And I've seen hundreds of people release worldwide ministries, uh, ministries around the country, ministries in different places. Now, it doesn't mean that I call them. God did. But I had a part or others had a part in releasing, imparting, and activating things in them to give them the spiritual gifting, anointing, and equipment they needed to fulfill their ministry and really cause them to walk in a, in a supernatural realm. This is my desire for every church, uh, my desire for every ministry. It's not the only thing. There's more than prophecy. I understand that. We need faith. We need healing. We need deliverance. We need worship, we need teaching, we need pastors, we need evangelism. But this area sometimes has been overlooked and neglected. And so I do a lot of teaching on it. I teach on other things as well. But one of my main callings is to teach and explain. Remember Proverbs 4, 7, wisdom is the principal thing 
Therefore, get wisdom, and with all that getting, get understanding. We need understanding in these areas. And when we began to move in the prophetic in our church, I did a lot of teaching on different areas of the prophetic from the Bible because I wanted the members to understand it. We need wisdom and understanding and walking in these things so we won't make a mess of things. So it's one of my favorite verses. Neglect not the gift that is in you that was given to you through prophecy. It was given to you through prophecy. It was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands of the elders. All elders should prophesy. Okay, if you're an elder or leader in the church, you should prophesy. It doesn't mean you have to be a prophet, but you should prophesy uh, because you're an elder, you're a minister. All believers should, but especially leaders, okay? All leaders should do this. That's what God has called us to do, to impart, to release people, ordain people, set people apart, send them out, release them. That's our calling. That's part of our job description, regardless of what, whether you're an apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, you're called by God. You're an elder. You're a bishop. The word elder and bishop are synonymous terms. God forbid there are bishops that don't prophesy. If you're a bishop, you should be prophesying. Don't, it's more than having on a clerical collar. Okay, and having a title, you should flow prophetically. I'll leave that alone. I don't want to get too far into that, but I'll let it go at that. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget, if you want to partner with me, if you're blessed by the teaching, you want to help me, what I'm doing around the world, go to the giving addresses. I decree Deuteronomy 111, the Lord make you a thousand times more, a thousand times more, a thousand times more, and um, sow your seed. The giving address is Cash App at AJE Global and PayPal at Apostle JE, the number one. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll continue it tomorrow as we wrap up this first week of October. And I'm looking forward to sharing. Don't forget Crusaders, Saturday, 2 p.m., 3821 South Michigan is our service. Um, and look, looking uh, forward to a great, great service at Crusaders this Sunday. God bless you as always in departing. Until you hear from me again, God bless you and double shalom. God bless.